Hello everyone, I hope you're doing great. In today's video, we learn how we can use the photo mode to improve our screenshots and present our slabs in the best way possible. So let's say you have finished a beautiful creation and you would like to show it in the best conditions possible. You'll first need to hit the F6 key to enter the photo mode. In this mode, the regular interface disappears and a new one is presented to you. The new menu has plenty of buttons and menus. We'll go through each of them with the settings I like to use and my advice. The top left button, or the H key, will make the interface disappear so you can take a screenshot without it. Regarding the screenshots, I would currently recommend that you use the Steam Screenshots hotkey, which is F12, as the current in-game screenshots do not provide a better quality and the times 2 or times 4 options do not work as of now. You will then be able to find the screenshots in the Steam library. When trying to take screenshots, I like first to disable the depth of field, set the vignette to 0 and the chromatic aberration to 0 too. This will allow you to have a clean image that you can then tweak to your liking. I always want to first focus on my subject, find a nice camera angle before I change anything else. So, try to fly around and look for interesting views. We're here in photography territory, and while I could do a whole course just on this, the quick version is to have a balanced image and to use the rule of thirds to improve your composition. The rule of thirds is a general guideline that proposes that an image should be imagined as divided into nine equal parts by two equally spaced horizontal lines and two equally spaced vertical lines. And that important compositional elements should be placed along those lines or their intersections. The rule of third does help but should not be taken as a mandatory rule. There are many other photography tricks that can help your composition. Once you have found a nice camera position, the next thing to change is the position of the light. Lighting is probably the most important factor when trying to showcase your builds, and is often the difference between a flat image and a vibrant one. The default sun position casts a very sharp and dark shadow in an almost top-down fashion. I like to change the sun position so it is lower on the horizon and better lights my construction. Find a setting that pleases you, but remember first to never take a screenshot that is too dark. A lot of builds are nice in the night, but you're just hiding your amazing work. To alleviate this, you can always up the exposure to a certain degree or choose a brighter time of day. A good exposure for me is set between 1.5 and 2.5 depending on my other settings, but take the time to play with it in various scenarios. Just remember that it is better to be too bright than too dark. The fog is also a delicate way to improve visibilities on dark settings, as it will diffuse lighting smoothly. Try to see what different levels of fog bring to your image, but again be mindful not to obfuscate your creation. The sun position around your building will also greatly change how your slab is perceived. A front-facing light will remove all shadows, and even if you can see clearly what you have built, shadows are important to highlight the details and depths. Turning the sun around can highlight the shapes of your slab really nicely, so take the time to find the most flattering angle. Take the time to also use different types of suns between the default one and the green slump. You can have drastic differences that will look very nice. You can even take multiple screenshots with different sun's position to get different parts of your build to reveal themselves under different lighting conditions. Once the lighting is correct, we can start to play with post-effects filters, vignettes and chromatic aberration. My favorite effect, and the one I use on almost all my pictures, is the enchanted one. If you set it between 5 and 25%, it will give a very nice deep blue haze to all your shadows and a bit more contrast to your image. You may need to adapt your other settings to correct fog and luminosities afterwards. 
take the time to try a lot of other post effects at various levels and see what the results are. But be careful of not overdoing it, as even if it can look dramatic, you may once again hide your creation. With some post effects, I like to add a bit of vignetting, between 0 to 4 at the realistic settings, and above that the vignette is very strong but can work in a more artistic screenshot. For the grammatic aberration, I like to use it on a very low setting, from 0 to 2 at a maximum. But again, stronger settings can have a nice and dramatic effect. Now that everything is set, you're almost ready to take a screenshot. But one very important setting is the anti-aliasing one. The default FXAA is not very sharp and will make for a kinda soft image. My recommendation would be to use the SMAA if you want to record a video and move the camera or to use the TAA if you want to take a screenshot. Indeed, the TAA is the sharpest and most accurate setting but will leave a ghosting artifact in movement and that can be distracting in a video or even worse with video compression. The final step I like to take is to properly add the depth of field. I put all the sliders to the minimum and then slowly adjust the focus distance to the object or point of interest I want to show. This should be where the eye is naturally drawn to in your composition. Try to focus on something that is preferably not near the edges of your screen. If it is near the edges of your screen, you may want to move your camera to center it a bit better. You can then change the aperture to something nice. Just remember that a realistic depth of field is not brutal and should change in a smooth gradient. I know I tend to make my depth of field, or DOF, a bit too heavy, when most of the time it should be subtle. Usually, small and close details have a sharper DOF while large panoramas have close to none. In practice, with a low field of view, you will have a very low aperture and a long focus distance. And with a wide field of view, you will get a very close focus distance and a very high aperture. This setting is probably the one you'll take the most time to master, as you need to play a lot with it to get a feel for what is right and most important, what you enjoy. Know that everything is perfect on your screenshot? You can just press F12 and let Steam take a screenshot for you. That is very good. But you may have realized that I have not yet spoken about the free camera and autographic camera that are available. The autographic camera will allow you to take top-down screenshots that are perfect for 2D maps as it removes the lens deformation. In this mode, I like to remove the chromatic aberration and vignette to have the sharpest image possible. Make sure to clearly show terrain elevation with the help of the sun's position. It is important, as this will be the only way to show height difference within this view. If your map is too big, fill your screen with your build and just slowly take multiple screenshots that you will be able to stitch together in another program like Photoshop. The free camera is a whole other beast. It is probably the mode I use the most, but it is a bit more difficult to handle. Try to experiment a lot with it, but here has some broad settings that work nicely. Obviously, the first thing to notice in the free camera mode is that you can now change the field of view. Think of it as a way to widen your point of view or to narrow it a lot. Remember that a very high FOV field of view will deform a lot the edges of the screen and a very narrow FOV will flatten everything. You can use those settings to make buildings look very dramatic, but my advice would be to use a low FOV, around 20 to 30, for exterior shots, and a high FOV, around 60, looks natural for interior shots. Remember to adjust your depth of field, fog and exposure accordingly. If you survived until this point, you know how to use all the tools in the photo mode. But I still have a lot of little tips to help you enhance your compositions. Once I'm in photo mode and before taking any screenshots, I like to fly around and to take the time to appreciate the volumes of my building, finding interesting views and details. 
it will help you find better and more interesting angles for your screenshots. When I take screenshots, if I have 10 screenshots that you see, it means I probably took 100 screenshots in total. The same angle with different lighting, time of day, depth of field, everything. I try a lot of stuff before I find an overall atmosphere that I like, and then I spend even more time viewing my buildings at all angles possible. Make sure to leave build mode 2, as hidden volumes and figurine will appear as greyed out on your screenshot. It can be an interesting artistic effect, but perhaps it is not something that you want. If you want to showcase your whole slab, take a screenshot of it with minimal effects. It is important to show what people will get by default before trying to show it in an atmospheric way. Though, one great way to improve said atmospheric screenshots is to add a background to your slide. Either paste it a few times or add a forest around it, something neutral to be able to show what it would be like when on a bigger board. Light is always very important. The sun's position is key, of course, but adding other sources of light with crystals, lamps, and so on to highlight your subject is key. In photography, subjects often have a front and a backlight to highlight their contour better or to distinguish them from their background. I often add lights that are not part of the slab to improve my screenshots. And those are almost all my secrets. I have still a few more and those will be for another day or perhaps I'll keep them to myself. In any case, take your time. Make hundreds of screenshots while trying all the settings. And most important of all, use lighting to showcase your creation in the best, well, in the best light. I hope this tutorial will help you for your own slabs. And I have an album in the description with all the screenshots I took for this tutorial for you to review. Have a very good day and stay creative, my friends.